Now, waiting on the line to talk to us is Alicia Williams from the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. Alicia, good morning. Good morning. Uh, What is your reaction to this buffer zone? It's an unprecedented decision, but unanimously taken uh, by Ealing Council. Yes, it is unprecedented. It will be the first time that a council has voted to ban peaceful acts of witness um, you know, in a certain location and ban a certain viewpoint from being expressed in public. And I think the, the main point is that it's a very sad day, for not just for democracy, but for women. Um, there are hundreds of women who have been helped by pavement councillors outside of this clinic. And we had some of these women speaking uh, in front of the council last night. They had very moving stories. And they and we are now, um, now devastated that other women in hard situations will not be offered this help. What is a pavement councillor exactly? You heard John uh, hanson Brevetti there describe pavement councillors as unqualified strangers. Is that what you are? Well, I'm not sure what qualifications you need to you know, stand there and say, um, we are able to offer you financial help. You know, We are able to talk to you. If you're in an abusive relationship, we can help you. I mean, if we're talking about unqualified counsellors, um, Mary Stopes has been in trouble with the Care Quality Commission for having healthcare assistants take consent or to have, having consent taken over the phone in 22-second conversations. I'm not sure he's going to talk about that. Well, I know, but, but people listening, that, that, that may or may not be the case. We're not talking about that, though. We're talking about the idea of women. We, we've heard people say that, um, you know, that, that your pavement counsellors have called women murderers, have, have, have sprayed them with holy water, as one of our callers said happened to her, have, have offered to pray for them, have called them mummy, have said, you know, you have the, you know, the, the blood of your feet is on your hands and all sorts of things that people won't think are really tantamount to counselling, but will think are tantamount to harassment and possibly abuse? Well, none of those things you mentioned are things that I recognise from the people I know who, who pray outside that clinic. Obviously, I can't guarantee that there's not been one rogue person who may have said such things, but uh, the Good Council Network who are out there, you know, they are there to help women. You're not going to help somebody. You're not going to be able to talk to them even if you shout at them. It's in nobody's interests to shout at women or intimidate them. They want to be able to talk to them, have a meaningful conversation. And if they don't want to talk, you know, if they offer the leaflet and they say no then that's the end of the that interaction. But that's not really what we're hearing, is it? We're hearing of women um, reaching the clinic distressed, in tears, terribly upset. We even heard one of our callers told about, you know, tiny sort of um, uh, models of fetuses, you know, kind of uh, life-size models that have been shown to women and displayed very vivid and, 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 and uh, garish pictures of, of, of a fetus in utero, that kind of thing. And, and do you deny all knowledge of those? Well, I don't think it's surprising that women are reaching an abortion clinic upset. You know, it's a very upsetting thing to have to um, to be going through, and they might be there for all sorts of um, very, very serious reasons. And it's that for that reason that people um, need to be outside of that clinic in case, you know, they are in abusive relationships or they do have very um, pressing financial concerns, which means that they feel they don't have a choice. A lot of women are there because they feel they don't have a choice and the pavement counsellors are there to offer them that choice. And how would you, if, if you spoke to a woman and, and she says, well, I, well I, I have to have this abortion because I'm in an abusive relationship or because I don't have the money or the funds to bring up a child, when you say you would help, what would you do? But I'm not actually one of these counsellors myself, but my understanding is, you know, they, they would talk to them and they would offer them, you know, personalised support depending on their situation. Um, so we had um, one mother speaking yesterday who's, you know, she was, uh, she was a foreign, a living au pair. She got pregnant. The father said she wants, he wanted nothing to do with it. She said, just go and have an abortion. And she got to the clinic. The clinic said they couldn't offer her anything but abortion. And then when she spoke to the people outside, they said, yes, we will um, we'll give you a place to stay because that was her problem then. She was going to be homeless. Uh, they gave her money until she was back on her feet. It's that kind of thing that Good Council offers. Well, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Alicia Williams of the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. 